Well, it's great to have you with us this morning. You may notice this morning is a little different. We're not going to take the offering at this point. We'll do it at the end this morning after we have gotten a chance to share with you how God has provided for our church family through the Every Knee initiative that we did in the spring. But before I talk to you about the money that God has provided, I want to remind you what Every Knee is all about. It's really not about money. It's really about helping people find and follow Jesus. That's what everything in our church is about. Helping people who don't know Jesus to come to know him and follow him. And things like buildings and budgets, those are just tools that we use to help people find and follow Jesus. Because ultimately what matters most in life is making disciples of Jesus. Helping people come to follow him. And when you think about how does a church make disciples? How does a church help people find and follow Jesus? Well, the answer actually is you. The answer is, is each of you and, and me too. It's not programs. It's not fancy things that the pastors put together. It's not buildings. It's people. It's, it's through us. It's God using each of us to introduce other people to the good news of Jesus Christ and then teach them and train them to follow him in every area of life. And so what we really want to talk about this morning is how can each of us use the opportunities we have this summer to help people find and follow Jesus? Because summer is, is beginning. We're looking at three months ahead of us. How can we use the chances God will give us this summer, the relationships, the experiences, the moments, to help people find and follow Jesus? As I was thinking about this sermon this week and how to put this together and talk about summer, I just realized, I have to be honest, summer really scares me because I am a parent and I will just be honest with you. The thought of my kids being out of school, at home every day for three months without any structure and I can't send them outside because it was almost 100 degrees yesterday and it's just the beginning of June. And that's terrifying to think about summer stretching out before me. And so I saw this meme on my Facebook post this, this week and it would be funny if it wasn't so utterly terrifying to think about the fact that... <laughs> My kids wrapped up school on Thursday, and now they don't go back for three months, and what am I going to do with them? How am I going to fill all of that time? It's really scary to be a parent in Texas in the summer. And so my goal for you this morning is not to add another thing to your list of things you have to do when you are just trying to survive. Instead, my goal and Chris McGuffey's goal, he'll come up here in a little bit, our goal is just to give you some inspiration for how you can use the time you will already spend with your kids, your family, your neighbors, out in the community with your coworkers in a way that counts for eternity. And what I'm gonna give you is actually a word picture that hopefully will, will motivate you, will, will excite you about using the challenging times this summer, the stressful, hot times this summer in a way that makes a difference in people's life forever. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to give you a word picture. It's actually not my word picture. It's Paul's word picture from the book of Colossians chapter four. He's going to talk about how we can redeem the time this summer to make an eternal difference. And so I'll, I'll just go ahead and put the verses up here, but you can turn to them in your Bible. I'm actually going to challenge you to join me and memorize these two verses as kind of like a theme for this summer, a goal for this summer. So Paul says, conduct yourselves with wisdom towards outsiders. Those are, that's those who, who don't yet know Jesus, making the most of the opportunity. Let your speech always be with grace as though seasoned with salt so that you will know how you should respond to each person. When Paul says making the most of every opportunity, literally in Greek, it says to redeem the time. You're already going to spend that time with, with your kids, your family, your, your neighbors, your coworkers. You're already going to spend it. So, so how do you buy that time back and use it in a way that, that makes a difference forever? And, and Paul tells you the way that you redeem your time this summer, the stressful, hot, busy time this summer, is that you should be salt. And that's, that's your word picture. There it is. Be salt. Be seasoning. 
in each and every interaction that you have this summer. So if you think about how seasoning works in a dish, my mom makes a lot of good things. The favorite thing that my mom makes is chicken and dumplings, and she's made it for for years. My absolute favorite dish, the very last step in my mom's chicken and dumplings recipe is she takes Louisiana hot sauce and drips just a tiny bit. And I mean, it's It's really just a tiny bit, and it totally changes the whole dish. I've had it without, and I've had it with it. And without, it's okay. It's all right. But with it, it is amazing. It is incredible. And so just a few drops of this Louisiana hot sauce totally transforms the the dish. And and kind of the engineer part of me kind of steps back and thinks, that's amazing, because if I was to measure by weight chicken and dumplings versus Louisiana hot sauce, this wouldn't even count. It it would basically round to zero in terms of total mass in that pot. And yet it flavors everything. It totally changes everything. A little seasoning goes a very long way. And that's the metaphor Paul wants to use. Now, sadly for Paul and people who lived back then, they did not yet have Louisiana hot sauce. They didn't have Louisiana. So they didn't have hot sauce at all. Um, They had only a few spices of which the most important was salt. But salt works in the same way. You just need a tiny bit. Salt was actually so valuable in the ancient world that it could be used as a commodity. You you could be rich in salt. People wanted it so much because a little of it could flavor a whole dish. And, And that's the metaphor Paul's trying to paint for us. The picture he wants us to see is that when we as followers of Jesus step into a group of people, even if you are the only person who knows Jesus in that whole group of people, if you will be a voice for grace, you will influence the whole group. A little grace goes a long way, just like a little seasoning. And so this summer, when you are in groups of people around the barbecue pit or the pool or out at the movies or wherever you happen to be, if you will be a voice of grace, and what Paul means is not just being a gracious person, although that's important, but being a voice of grace, speaking about the grace of God we have in Jesus, speaking about the joy and the peace and and that love we sang about that comes with no conditions. If you will speak about that and talk about that and live that out in a group of people this summer, even if you were the only one being a voice of grace, you can change people's lives for eternity. You can have an outsized impact because a little grace can go a long ways. And so as I've thought about that passage, here's what has convicted me. What's challenged me is that my kids start morning swim practice tomorrow, and they're going to do it for, for who knows how long. And, and I take the kids to swim practice, and the deal is, you, pro- you may not know this about swim practice, parents, we don't get to swim. Kids do. They get to jump in the water. Fun for them. We just sit there in the sun. And that's not pleasant. And so I have been dreading the thought of taking my kids to swim practice because it is already so hot. And so this week, as I've been working on this sermon, I just thought, you know, the deal is, is as I'm driving my kids to swim practice, I have a choice. I can think about how much I hate the sun, or I can spend that time praying and asking God to help me redeem that time. It's not time I want to spend. I don't really want to stand on cement in the sun in Texas in June, but help me God to redeem that time and use it. And so for me, one of the the things that I've been thinking about this coming week is spending that time in the car with my kids, asking God to help me to use that time intentionally to be salt in someone's life. So some other parent who's hating life that they have to be there in the hot sun, help me, God, to to be salt, to be a voice of grace to that person, to not just spend that time on my phone, but to actually be a joy to them, a, a source of peace, of hope, just show an interest in them, even just get to know their name. And so that would be my challenge for you. I'm not asking you to go do a whole lot of new stuff. Simply redeem the stuff that you're already gonna do by asking God to help you to be salt to be a voice of grace when you are around other people this summer. So very practically speaking, how can you do that? Well, I've already told you, I'm going to give you a couple steps. Step number one is I would encourage you to to memorize this passage. It's real short. I'm going to try to do it this week as well. Just to remind myself, it's kind of my goal this summer. There's a lot of things I'm going to have to do that maybe I'm not going to want to do, but God helped me to redeem that time 
by being salt, by being, by being a voice of grace with the people that I'm around. So I'd encourage you to memorize those two verses, Colossians 4, 5, and 6. When you memorize it, it goes from your mind to your heart. It becomes part of you so that it comes kind of unbidden to your mind as you need it. So I would encourage you to memorize those verses. And then the second practical step that I would give you is to get equipped to redeem that time. Because there may be some of you out there who you say, Blake, I, I like that idea. I like that word picture of being salt, but I have no idea how to do it. I, I don't know how to be a voice of grace to people around me this summer. And so one of our goals this morning is to actually give you some very practical advice for how you can be salt in the world this summer. And that's actually what the staff is here for. If you wondered, why does the church have staff? It's not so that we can uh, go do all the ministry or be the shining lights of Jesus on earth. You are the shining lights of Jesus on earth. We're just here to equip you. We're just here to, to help provide for you the training and the resources that you need to be a, a kingdom of priests to this world. And on our staff, the person who is really best at equipping and training us is our outreach staff and Chris McGuffey, our outreach pastor. And so I have asked him to come up this morning and spend some time with us, walking us through some of the opportunities we have here at this church to be equipped so that we can be a voice of grace here in Bryan College station and around the world. So Guff, if you will come on up. That's great. Now, before Blake uh, takes off, there's just a, a rare moment. I want you guys to do uh, something that's a little bit interesting. We're going to have a good time this morning. So I'm going to tell you something to do that no pastor should. I want everybody to pull out your phone. Okay. So everybody pull out your phone and go to your camera app. Okay. So go to your camera app. Blake, I want you to invite you to come stand over here. And on three, I want you guys to, to have the opportunity to take a picture of your two favorite Southwood pastors. <laughs> okay? So I want you to be able to do this. So on three, ready? One, two, say sorry, Trey. Three. That's fantastic. Y'all are free to uh, post that on social media. <laughs> Uh, if you'd like to. I want you to keep your, uh, keep your camera ready because there's a couple of slides that I want you guys to be able to take a picture of as we go through uh, our presentation this morning. I just thought, what better way can we try to get information to you guys? Uh, and so sometimes, you know, we, we put these, uh, the, the, the websites and the different things up online and, uh, and I want you to be able to walk away. And then at the end, I need you to pay attention this morning. I'm sure you pay attention every morning, but I need you to pay attention this morning uh, because at the end, I'm actually going to have you get on your phone and go take a little survey. Okay. We're going to, we just want to be able to get a little bit of information from you guys uh, that'll talk about how it is that you would like us as a church staff to be able to equip you. So rarely do you get to speak so loudly into the programming that we want to put before you. So keep your, uh, keep your phones ready, keep your cameras ready, and I'll let you know a couple of the moments that, uh, that we're going to take uh, to be able to do that. So that's kind of fun, taking a pick. That's great. Uh, some of the things that, uh, that Blake already mentioned, you know, the, the vision of our church uh, really is to help people find uh, and follow Jesus. So this morning, as we think about that, I, I want us to think, you know, we're, we're working up to this moment of celebration as, as an outflow of, uh, of our Every Knee initiative. Okay, how does that actually impact the vision that God has given for our church? Okay, first off, I think it does a couple of things. Uh, the first is that uh, our Every Knee initiative allows us to drive our vision a little bit deeper. You know, for the last 52 years, we have been uh, really committed to spreading the gospel to every, uh, every nation, every uh, person that we know as far and wide as possible. But really the purpose of every knee is to get 100% engagement from all of those that are in our church family. We as a church staff, as Blake said, we want to be able to equip you as our church body and to make sure that there's at least one little thing that's happening, okay? That if you're not able, if you're not willing, if you're not practicing this aspect of reaching out in evangelism and discipleship, we don't want it to be our fault by not having given you the skills needed to be able to do that. Our commitment is to be able to... Uh, to equip you as our church family so that we can take this vision of helping people to find and follow Jesus 
and to drive it deeper and deeper into our lives. The second thing that we want to do uh, through this initiative, uh, Every Knee Initiative, it allows us to achieve our vision faster. Now, we, I want to make sure you, uh, you, you understand clearly, we are always depending on the Lord to help us move forward uh, in success. But there's something that happens as we clarify our language and we clarify our vision and we set aside some specific funding to be able to plan well. Okay? To be able to, to know how we can challenge our people and know the pace, how fast can we run as a church. And through this Every, uh, every Knee initiative, we've been able uh, to, to set aside some funding for just these very purposes and to plan better uh, into our future. So let's quickly, uh, let's quickly walk through uh, a couple of opportunities. And it's, if anybody's wearing the t-shirt today, it talked about every day and every nation, uh, every neighbor and every nation. And that's how we want to kind of divide up some of our opportunities to be equipped uh, this morning. So you can see the, uh, as, as, at the very beginning, we have uh, our every day. Okay, our everyday opportunities. And if you think about it, uh, all of us, as we, as, as we live our lives, there's kind of three ways that you divide up your life relationally. Okay, three ways that you divide up your life. Okay, first off, there's people that, you, uh, that are kind of like you, that you either live next to, or you work or study with, or people that you play with. So most of us in here have jobs that we show up to, uh, and so we cultivate relationships in that way. Uh, all of us have neighbors, unless you live you know, way out on a farm by yourself. Uh, you have neighbors that you, live, uh, that you live near. And then for especially those of us with kids, uh, or maybe some of the older kids, y'all already have hobbies. Uh, you have all kinds of different things. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something crazy. Uh, I bought a, a, a 10 window bus that I'm turning into an RV. And I'm telling you, my neighbors have already started coming to my house and think, are you having a midlife crisis? You know, what is going on in your world? But it's an opportunity to be able to involve them in my life, the people that we live next to. Okay, so think about the people that you live next to, the people that you, uh, that you work with, or maybe the people that you play with. You know, one of the great uh, opportunities that I have in, in my job is that I get to hear a lot of the stories about how people are reaching out, the stories of life change uh, that happen through really the everyday person that goes to our church. And they always like to come and tell us, hey, here's what God is doing in my life. It usually, to be honest with you, uh, for all the stuff that we do at the church, it's, it's very rarely through one of the events or through one of the sermons that we give. Okay, that's kind of part of it. It may be the initial part that gives people the idea, but life change really happens when normal people when normal people allow an exceptional God to guide them as they begin to make the kingdom of God a priority in their life. Recently, here's a story. Recently, uh, we heard one of our older, wiser ladies in our congregation uh, in Grace Bible Church uh, kind of exclaimed. Here's what she wrote. She said, I did it, I did it. After eight years of having the same lawn mowing guy, I finally invited him in for some lemonade and a snack, and I asked him about Jesus. We had a good conversation, and I never thought about talking with him before, and now I've started to see all the people that I've been blind to that I could be talking with about Jesus. You see, it isn't always a real clever strategy, okay? Somebody mowing her yard for the last eight years that she takes a step to invite him into a deeper relationship and talk about the most important things on our heart. It's more about a determination, a little determination and a little step of faith and that God begins to open up our eyes, not really to a whole new world, but actually to the world that is already around us. Not too long ago, uh, just in the past couple of uh, last month or so, uh, our freshman class uh, at our Anderson campus, they began to look around and they realized, you know, we already know so many different people from school, but we don't actually know where they are spiritually. So they decided to kind of take the reins into their own hands and they just simply arranged a pool party uh, at one of, their, uh, one of their neighborhood pools. They, uh, the, the, they had about 35 kids show up and probably half of the kids that showed up had never attended Grace Bible Church before. 
Simply, a, a couple of the students that were involved with it, uh, a guy named Nick and a girl named Elizabeth, they stood up, they welcomed everybody to the pool party, and they just shared with them a little bit about their relationship with Jesus. And then they went one step further and invited them to be a part of a community of students that was trying to learn uh, about the Lord together. And it was amazing at what happened. The next week, so many of those students who had not previously been part of some other church, what did they do? They showed up at the Anderson Youth Group the week after, and they began to hear more about what it meant to have a relationship with God. Not a fancy strategy, just an awareness to, to go and not just do the things that we're already doing, but to take a few people along with them. So how can we be uh, equipped to do something similar? Okay, so how can we be equipped in kind of this everyday, uh, this everyday lifestyle with those that we work with or those that we live near or those that we play with? You can see some things that are uh, here up on the board. Okay, uh, we, have, we can always invite people to church in home groups uh, that we might be a part of. But as Blake said, it's not our job to do the work of the gospel in their life. So bringing them to church only is not necessarily where it ends, but it, where it, it could be where it begins, that conversation. The conversation you have on the way home or over lunch about spiritual things, about how people enjoyed or maybe didn't enjoy the things that they sat through at church. Okay, also you can, uh, we, we, we've often had these how to share our faith classes. And so one of the greatest things people say, I so much, I so desperately wanna be able to share with my coworker, but I just don't know the words to say. If that's your biggest problem, that's fantastic because we can solve that. My fear is that our biggest problem actually has to do with our heart. And that's where life change needs to happen. Some other things that are up there, we're gonna challenge you uh, here in a little bit to, to do a block party, but you have neighbors that, that God has already ordained to live next to you. And to answer that question that he wants you to be a part of their lives, if at all possible. And then for those of you, you know, we, we talk a little bit about some faith at work issues because sharing your faith in the workplace is a little bit tricky at times, okay? Or for those of you that are students that are about to leap out of our congregation and go into the work world, talking about life after college, what does it look like? I promise it doesn't look like it does in College Station at Grace Bible Church, okay? The world looks a little bit different and you need to be ready for what that looks like. The second area, according to uh, kind of the way that we designed our vision, uh, is this idea of every neighbor, okay? And we need to kind of expand our thoughts. Our neighbors are not just those that live within five houses around us, but really our neighbors are people that, uh, everyone that lives uh, inside of our community, okay? People around me that might not be exactly like me, okay? It could be different ethnic groups, okay? It could be... Uh, people of different nationalities, or people from different socio or economic backgrounds. And we have to remember, like the Good Samaritan, it's, it's an understanding that our neighbors include, this, this, this idea of our neighbors includes everybody pushing as far out to the corners of our community as we can. It's the homeless, it's those that are in poverty, it's the rich, it's the immigrant, it's the vulnerable, it's the unborn. And our job as a church is not finished until we press out and do the best that we can to reach into every corner of our community. To be honest, that's why we're not stopping at Creekside, but we're dreaming about how we as a church can serve every aspect, every part, every ethnicity, every nationality, every socioeconomic circle of our community and to do a better job. Well, what does this look like every day? One of our, uh, our Southwood College uh, students, uh, her name is Sarah, she met some international students uh, in her economics class. Uh, and then she realized, she, as she began a relationship with them, she realized that those students lived in an apartment complex where some of her other friends uh, lived. Okay, so her friends, Mark and Sarah, they all got together. Uh, Mark and Abigail got together with Sarah and, uh, and they began to have a relationship with these people and, uh, and were doing some fun things. They were from China and so they uh, learned how to eat what's called hot pot, this great Chinese soup. Uh, and uh, they watched football and explained to them all of the different rules and, uh, and just began to live a bit of their life together with them uh, and then invited them 
to a Bible study just to be able to read the Bible together. And it was amazing to see the transformation of what took place. And the great news at the end of the story is that I think three of those people that initially got into reading the Bible with them ended up trusting Christ and following him. But we sometimes we focus on the big ends and we forget about the simple means. Okay, it was about food and football and reading our Bible. And those are things that you guys, I hope, are doing every single day. Okay? <laughs> in season, okay? <laughs> it's things that we do every day. You can begin to invite those that are around you into the daily activities and to take that step of faith and to be able to say, would you like simply just to read with me this book that I believe has the answers to life and see if we can find something there together. But it's not just students we actually have in our congregation, a mom uh, here at Southwood that she met some students from India uh, last year uh, at, at the big giveaway. And they were in so, so much in awe about our church and how we had made decisions to love the international community. And so she began to uh, be able to share some stories with them because they were in her car and guess what they found in her car? Crafts from Sunday school. Okay, so her kid's stuff is laying around in the car and they pick it up and they begin to ask her questions about what this is and she begins to be able to share uh, parts about her, of her relationship with Christ just because of the things that, that were found in her car and the love that these people had been shown by our church. She invited them to read the Bible with her and now she's able to meet with them weekly and everyone is so excited for them to be able to get together and to talk about God's word. We wanna be able to help reach every neighbor. And here's some great places to start this summer. If you don't know anything about, uh, about race relations or racial reconciliation, I wanna say that, man, the, the BCS Be The Bridge Facebook group uh, is a great place to start. Your mind is gonna be blown. You're not gonna agree with everything that's written there, and that's okay, but it is a great place for those of us, primarily those of us that are white, to begin to understand what is happening, yes, in our community and the ways that we as a church can be a part of, of making bridges uh, to every racial group uh, that's, that's here because we hold the keys to reconciliation. Another opportunity is uh, the racial reconciliation roundtables. And if you don't know what those are, that's okay. Put it in your mind and, and you, can, you can ask us about it, but it's a way to actually sit down with people and have a learning process, okay? An open, honest conversation with people in our community and to learn about what's happening. We do an MLK event every year where we get, to rather, get together and read the letter from the Birmingham jail, okay? And we let that sink into us because the letter was written to churches and things that we need to learn. And of course, maybe more familiar is we're about to come up on the big giveaway uh, and the follow-up uh, strategy that we have from that, a, a meal in an American home. And if you want to reach out and you want to understand a little bit more about how to reach, to the, reach out to the 7,000 international students that are in our city, much less the rest of the faculty and other people that are here, then man, we've got a way to get you your few, a few friends right from the beginning. And we hope that you guys will take part in that. A commitment to every neighbor is also why we do Grace for the City, okay, on June the 16th. So put that in your calendar. It isn't just a service project that we do to make us feel better or for a, a way for us to look better as a church. Rather, it's an opportunity for us to meet the neighbors that we don't always see, to learn about their needs, and to build relationships that I hope will earn, help us to earn the privilege to be able to share with them the good news of Jesus. It's a starting point to help many of us uh, whose hearts really already ache for our community to make new friends and to be able to begin to use the gifts that God has given us. So we're gonna challenge you guys to do one of a couple of different things, okay? And the first is to throw a block party, okay? It's a super simple way just to invite your neighbors out to a safe place uh, in the middle of the street, depending on the street that you live on, uh, but to find a place, maybe into your home or your yard, and to invite a bunch of people over and just to get to know who they are. Do you know that your, peop your, your, that your neighbors, they want to know who lives around them? Okay? They may feel standoffish, but they want to know because it meets their needs of security, okay? safety and security. 
we did this, my family did this with a couple of other couples uh, last year and it was fun. We, uh, we just decided we'd make some invitations and we had a, a barrier you know, that we just said we're gonna do it to everybody. A lot of the neighbors we already knew because we were building relationships with them uh, and a lot of the neighbors we didn't know at all. And so we ended up uh, just get, getting down into the cul-de-sac that was nearest our house uh, and served some ice cream. And we had about 35 different people come from our neighborhood. Okay, 35 different people. And it was so fun. You know what their reaction was? Most of the people there thanked us for initiating something that they've always wanted to do. Okay, they thanked us. All in all, I think it lasted about an hour. Okay, so it wasn't, we just served some ice cream and some, and some Cokes and uh, about an hour of our time. And some of those relationships, even though it was a short-term event, some of those relationships have lasted all year long. So it's pretty easy. You can do it in your house. You can do a dessert. You can do a full meal. You can cater barbecue if you want to. There's no rules about what you can do, but it can just be a simple way to gather your neighbors and say, hey, we care about you guys. Start start to build relationships that may lead into some gospel conversations over time. The second thing that you can do uh, is uh, to be involved in uh, uh, and what's going on with our uh, Grace for the City event. Two different partnerships that uh, we wanna challenge you guys to be a part of. Uh, you can pick one or the other, or you can do both if you want. First off, we're gonna be serving the church pantry. They serve in a homeless population, serve the homeless population in down, downtown Bryan by, uh, by providing these uh, blessing boxes uh, that are filled with food uh, that anybody uh, would be able to eat. And they need us to help to stock those boxes by bringing or buying uh, some non-perishable, high-protein uh, food things that they, can, that they can arrange in those boxes and give immediate relief to people that are experiencing some pretty hard, a pretty hard season in their life. You can participate by buying or bringing those, and we'll, we can explain a little bit uh, more about how that works. But also, they have a couple of service projects uh, that they need to do uh, in their facilities uh, in downtown. So if that's interesting uh, to you, you want to do that, then I'll, I'm going to give you a way to let us know. The second one is with Steel Creek Ranch. Uh, Steel Creek Ranch is a great school and an opportunity to take kids that have gone through some incredibly difficult times uh, and to put them uh, in a housing situation with some loving house parents uh, and to help them not only re-put their life back together but also gain an education uh, at the same time. And we wanna bless this incredible ministry uh, by uh, helping them out with some indoor cleaning that they have, some outdoor yard work, and by cooking what they call some freezer meals that they can stock up uh, in their housing that the, uh, that the house parents can use over time. So it's some great opportunities to do that. Okay, so here we are. We're getting ready to take our next pick. All right, so get your cameras out. And uh, here's what I want you to do. Uh, it's a little bit uh, difficult up here, but you can see this is the uh, website. If you wanna go and to sign up for any of these, a block party or uh, to sign up for one of the events, the bottom is really the easiest way to get there is to go to our website uh, and just click one of the main rotating uh, slides on the front of it and it'll take you right there. Okay, so uh, also uh, our outreach staff are wearing these, uh, I don't know what color shirt it is, um, melon, uh, muted melon. I don't know what it is, but they're out in the foyer today. If you want to get immediate answers uh, about who they are, uh, about what's going on with, uh, with this, please find our outreach staff uh, in the foyer and you'll be able to do that. Okay. So visit this as an opportunity. Okay, so even though there's a lot of room uh, for growth in these first two areas in our church of every day and every neighbor, uh, we don't want to leave off every nation, right? We're not compromising our commitment to missions. And we want to help people find and follow Jesus until the last people group on the planet gets a chance to respond to the gospel. And that's why it involves every nation. Okay, every nation. So what are we talking about with every nation? A couple of opportunities. One is that through this Every, uh, every Knee initiative, we're setting aside some money to, to figure out how we can best train some people in our church uh, and, and then challenge them to go out to certain areas outside of our own immediate context somewhere else in the U.S. to plant a church or to partner with a church uh, so that we can re repeat this great environment that we have as we try to go out and do something among the university uh, and family model of churches in the U.S., Okay, so you'll hear more about that in, uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, but also just our, our continued commitment to international missions. 
You know, I've talked about missions uh, with people all my adult life. It's really my job, okay? So I've heard uh, every excuse under the sun. And, uh, but oftentimes, the, the, the dismissal that people give comes in a form that really is like this. It says, I could never do what you guys have done. And that's just not the truth. And I know that there are some in our congregation that the Lord continues to drop little seeds, little ideas, right? And, uh, and, and you don't know what to do with that. Maybe the Lord is giving you an, an opportunity to step forward and to say, I want to find out more about what it would mean to give my life to go overseas for a few years or for the rest of my life to be able to serve him in a context that's like that. So I want to challenge you guys. I promise it's really just a succession of simple steps and a willingness to continue to say, uh, say yes to the Lord. Our traditional, uh, for our traditional missions, we have a number of different ways to equip. We have this, uh, this pretty simple, it's about a six or eight week uh, training that we do in, uh, in the fall called Awaken. Uh, and then we have a kind of a more in-depth course uh, to learn about uh, missions and about being missional in our community and overseas uh, called Perspectives that we do every spring. Uh, and then there's always, I can't, we're, we're sending out somewhere around 200 different people uh, on uh, mission trips between our youth and our college and our adult trips uh, this summer. And if you haven't been on one of those, highly encourage you uh, to take that step of faith. How can you say no to something that you've never experienced? Okay, so get out there and with an open heart say, Lord, is this what you might want me to do? And for those of you that are kind of already thinking through, wow, I would love to maybe do something a little bit longer term, but I don't know what my first step is. We have some great pre-filled training uh, through what we call Go Groups, Global Outreach Groups, uh, that I would love to get you in touch with our mobilization staff, and they could help you out. As I said before, we're, uh, we are ready to challenge every person in our congregation to be fully engaged with the vision of our church. So right now, I would love for people, this is the last picture that I want you to take, okay? So get ready to take a pic. This, this is a, a website address of a, of a simple little deal. And if, if you can get it to work on your phone right now, I mean, I, it, it, it takes about a minute or less. And what I want you to do, this is just an opportunity for us to find out how many of you in our congregation right now are interested in which of the ways that we might be able to help equip you. Whether that's through our everyday initiative, whether that's through our every neighbor opportunities, or whether it's through every nation. And if you'll go through either this morning or later on this afternoon, we'll try to put some reminders out on social media. We would love to hear from you and I'll make you this promise that we will develop whatever we need to do in terms of equipping and training to help you reach out to the people that are already on your heart. If we do this right as a church family, our journey together is gonna be a little bit scary but it's also gonna be incredibly rewarding. So as you guys are working on that, I'm gonna invite Blake back up here to finish this off this morning. Thank you, Gough. Well, as we talked about, this is a morning where we wanna tell you guys how the Every Knee initiative went that we have been doing over the last few months. So if you think about what is Every Knee about, well, ultimately it's about expanding what Guff just talked about. We feel called to reach every person on the planet with the good news of Jesus Christ. And to do that, we need to grow. And so every knee is about how God is growing our capacity as a church family to reach this world so people can find and follow Jesus. And so what has God been doing in this Every Knee initiative? Well, I want to share with you some of the results so far. If, if you recall, our primary goal as we thought about what is God challenging our church to do, it's, it's 100% engagement. It's all of us who call Grace Bible Church home, giving all that we have to Jesus so that all of us can experience the joy that comes when, when you generously offer all that you are and all that you have to him. And so that was our challenge. And when we looked at what God did over the, the last few weeks, the number that we are most excited about when we added everything up is maybe not the number you're, you're expecting. It's this one, that there were 800 new first-time givers. And what does that mean? 
Well, that means that there were 800 of our brothers and sisters here at Grace Bible Church who had never been in any way financially involved in the mission God had called us to who now are. And, and ultimately, that's what matters most is that more and more of us are saying, God, we, we want to be involved in what you're doing through this church family to help others find and follow Jesus. So that, that number really excited us. We were blown away by that. Another number that shocked us, we could not believe, we weren't even expecting to have anything like this to say, $58,400 donated or committed by our youth ministry. So that's junior high and high school students stepping up and saying, this is what we want to give to the Lord over the next two years. So that was incredible, over $58,000. We saw that among our adults, our typical giving among us adults, myself included here at Grace Bible Church, many doubled or tripled what they were giving to Grace Bible Church as part of what God is doing in this world. So really exciting numbers. Now the number kind of everybody wants to know, well, what has been committed to Grace Bible Church over the next couple of years? If you recall, we told you guys our, our church is a church with an annual budget of just a little bit under $6 million. And so that means that when we think about what we would expect to receive, receive over the course of two years, that would be $12 million. And that's an incredible number. That's, that's a huge number. But remember, we're, we're a multi-campus church serving over 5,000 people each week. Lots of stuff going on here. So that's what we would expect to receive over the next two years. What has been committed by all of us over the next two years is actually $22 million. And so that's a, a humongous increase. That's $10 million over what would normally be offered at Grace over the next two years. So we're blown away by that. That's incredible what you guys have committed to do here at Grace Bible Church. Really excited that, that $10 million means we can do a lot. We can do an incredible amount to reach more people with the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, you may recall when we added up everything, we said, okay, we, we need to build Creekside. We want to launch a fourth local campus. We want to plant more churches nationally. We want to plant more churches internationally. Like our dream list, if you will, like your dream wall, that whole dream wall added up to like $32 million. So, so this isn't $32 million, but it's a big chunk of the way there. And so we are very excited about what God is already doing. 22 million puts us way down that path. Now, practically speaking, the fact that it's 22 rather than 32, what does that mean? Well, 22 means we can move forward with Creekside, which, which we're excited about. We have to do that. They, they can't stay in the school for a whole lot longer. And so we're able to go ahead and build the Creekside campus. So we're really excited about that. Um, it will take us probably a little bit longer to pay off all that Creekside will cost, but we are on a really good track to pay it off. And over the 52 years that we have existed as a church, we've already always paid off our debts far faster than the banks have asked us to. And so we expect that that will continue. Now, 22 million also means we can move forward with planting new churches nationally and internationally and other local campus. We can't do them all simultaneously though. And so what our elders are gonna be doing over the course of this year is praying about which one do we start with? What, what do we go do right now of the new local campus, new national, international church plants? How do we stage them out? So we can't do all of them today. We'll have to stage them out a little bit, which, which probably is okay. It's probably God making sure the staff doesn't all die. So we're going to trust that the elders are going to give us the sequence and we'll be sharing more information with you all when we know which one are we going after now, which one after that, which one after that. If you remember this Every Knee initiative, it is a two-year initiative. And so we're hopeful that God will continue to grow that number. It continues to grow every day. There's new cards coming in every day. Particularly, it's kind of exciting to see a lot of our former students who live wherever now, they left a long time ago, they've heard what we're doing and are giving back to that. So we pray that God will continue to raise that number so that he can continue to multiply the impact that we have in the world for his son. So we believe that God is in the business of doing incredible things through Grace Bible Church, and we're grateful that you all have decided to participate with us in that. And so what we're going to do now um, is share some stories with you because numbers are not that interesting. It's really stories that matter. And so we've been capturing stories over the last few weeks of what God is doing in people's hearts as they think about committing their lives to Jesus and to the growth of his kingdom. So I'm gonna share those stories with you. After we share those stories, the worship team's gonna 
be up here, and we're gonna go ahead and collect our offering. It's, it's the first of kind of the every knee offering, so this is when the two years begins of our every knee offering. So we'll collect that offering, and then we're gonna continue in worship together as we celebrate what God has already done and what he continues to do at Grace Bible Church.